For every 100 people seeing your business listing in Google, five of them will take an action such as call you or visit your website. Put simply, the more your listing shows up in Google, the more customers you are likely to get. But the question is, how many people are really seeing it and taking actions? If you have no idea, stay tuned, because today I'm going to show you how to get under the hood of your listing so you understand how hard it's working for you. Hold your breath, because we're diving in now. Hi there, my name is Luke Duran, the founder of BrankingAcademy.co.uk, where I talk about the best tools, tips, and tricks to help your small business grow online step by step and click by click. If it is your first time here, consider subscribing and clicking on the bell button so you don't miss a thing. Claiming a Google business listing is the easy part of your online marketing strategy, but how do you know if it's effective? The answer, Google My Business Insights. If you are a well-seasoned GMB user, you may already be very familiar with Google My Business Insights and want to skip this video, but I suggest you stick around as there might be a thing or two you might not be aware of. If you're ready, head over to google.com slash business and log in your Google My Business account using the email address you registered your business with. For today's video, I'm gonna use one of my clients Google listing. Once you've logged in, on the left-hand side panel, click on Insights. Let's have a look at our first report, how customers search for your business. This report provides details about how searchers have come across your business listing in Google search results. You have the option to look at the data over the last week, month, or last quarter. Let's choose quarter for now. The important thing you need to understand here is that the numbers being displayed, although called searches, are based on impressions and not click. If you don't know what an impression is, let me explain. Impressions are the number of times your listing is displayed in search results. It doesn't matter if people click on it or give you a call, it is just shown to a user as a result of a search. In this example, the result of the search will account for one impression for each business displayed in a three pack. The number of impressions is split in three different categories, direct, discovery, and branded. By default, the pie chart displays the aggregated number of searches across all categories. You can filter through the categories by either clicking on a color of the chart or on the category itself. Let's have a look at the direct category. The direct category refers to the number of people who have made a search for your business using your business name or location. These searches are generally triggered by users who have already heard of your business through marketing communication or customers you've worked with in the past and already know who you are. They can be considered as branded searches. Like in this example where I searched for the exact name of this dentist located in Tucson. Most of the time these types of searches will display your full Google My Business knowledge panel on the right hand side of the search results. So in this instance, the data shows that my client's listing was displayed 3,834 times over the past quarter through direct searches. Moving on to the discovery category. The discovery category refers to the number of people who have triggered your listing to be displayed in Google when searching for more generic keywords and categories related to your business, such as emergency plumbers, nearest coffee shop, hair salon, etc. In most cases, they will return a local pack result. These impressions are, most of the time, the results of your search engine optimization efforts, which will help you climb the rankings, since the higher you will rank, the more impressions you'll get. For most businesses, these searches will account for anything between 60 to 85% of overall impression, which is why it's extremely important you focus a lot of efforts on your search engine optimization strategy. Let's have a look at our final category, branded. This final category called branded can be confusing. It refers to people who search for brands which your listing may be associated with. For example, if I search for Nike shoes near me, this is what I get. A list of three businesses with one official Nike store and two other stores selling Nike shoes. These searches are generally quite small as you can see in the example of my clients in sight. Time to move on to our next report. Queries used to find your business. This report shows the list of keywords users search for in Google, which resulted in your listing to be found. This is extremely useful as it helps you identify the most common search terms your business is associated with. 
use these to optimize or create relevant content on your website as well as creating other digital assets such as Google posts which should result in higher engagement from searchers as they will be more relevant. The top 10 terms are listed but you can go through more suggestions using the arrows at the bottom of the panel. For more keyword ideas, select the longest period possible, one quarter, and see the list expand. Go through the list to discover keywords you may have not thought about and create additional content pages on your website, for instance. Do not be alarmed by how small those numbers are. This is because the metrics used here is users and not impressions, and is also restricted by privacy policy. Let's have a look at our next report. Where customers view your business on Google. Your Google listing can be found in two ways, either through Google Maps or the more conventional Google search on both desktop and apps. This is what this report shows. Once again, you can select the time period for which you want to check the total number of impressions and an aggregated number will show up right under the time range. You can look at each stream in isolation by simply ticking the box next to the label. This graph is extremely useful if your business relies on foot traffic, which is likely to rely a lot more on being found in Google Maps instead of Google search. Here is an example for one of my clients who runs a B&B in France. Check the number of impressions it received in Google Maps over a quarter, almost 42,000 compared to the number of impressions it received in search, 1,700. Let's now look at another client of mine, an electrician, who relies more on Google search than Google Maps. It's the complete opposite. So what does this mean? If your business relies more on map searches, make sure your website is very well optimized for mobile, which is where most searches are likely to happen, especially through the Google Map app. Let's move on to our next report. Customer actions. This next report is probably one of my favorite ones because of the value it provides. This is where you truly find out how users interact with your listing and is broken down into four different types of actions. The number of people who visit your website, the number of people who have requested directions, the number of phone calls you have received, and the number of people who have messaged you. You can isolate each option separately if you wish by simply ticking on the corresponding action you want to check. To get any data on messages, you will need to first enable the messaging option in your GMB profile. The principle here remains the same, select a time frame and watch the number of actions taken aggregated right under. You can use this information to make improvement in your strategy and assist potential customers. For instance, if you notice a surge of direction requests, you can add content on your site to provide details about public transport, etc. Don't forget to add images to your Google My Business profile or even better, videos to support this content. The easier you make it, the better it will be for your clients. Some of these actions are broken down more granularly, such as directions requests. Obviously, you will only see this report if users are traveling to your location. If there is enough data available, the direction request report shows a heat map of where the requests have been performed along with the name of the locations or the zip code. The beauty of this report is that you can easily identify locations where your business is most popular and target them with paid campaign through Facebook advertising or Google AdWords, for example. Date ranges are the same as other reports. The other detailed report action is phone calls. This is a straightforward report which details the number of phone calls you receive through your listing. Through this report, you can easily figure out which days people call you the most and drill down even further by time of day, allowing you to figure out when customers are most likely to call you. This is a great insight for those of you who decide to run any promotion through AdWords or Facebook, for example, as you will be able to pinpoint exactly when the best opportunity is to run your ads or launch a promotion. And if you're not running any promotion, at least make sure someone is able to answer the phone during those times. Let's move to photo views. A study conducted over 45,000 business listings by Bright Local revealed that businesses with more than 100 images on Google My Business get 520% more calls, 
2,717% more direction requests and 1,065% more website clicks than the average business, which highlights the importance of this report. On this report, you can see the number of views your photos are getting compared to businesses like yours. You can filter through the photos you post yourself or photos customers post on your listing. If you notice that businesses like you are getting more views, it might be an indication that your photo strategy needs to be changed and review the quality of what you are posting. Note that Google will count a photo viewed if it's being displayed in a snack pack or your Google listing panel. If the user clicks on the photo, it will be counted again. Make sure you don't publish any stock photos on your listing. Google will remove them. Let's have a look at our last report, photo quantity. Quality of photo is one thing, quantity is another. As already mentioned, volume matters, and businesses with over 100 images are likely to get more customer actions, period. This report helps you compare the number of images that appear on your listing with other businesses. If you find your competitors have more images than yours, consider uploading more. You can filter the results via photos you have posted yourself versus images posted by your customers. If you find it a struggle to publish your own photos, encourage your customers to publish for you. A word of caution though, if you adopt this strategy, make sure you speak to happy customers, otherwise you might end up with some shocking results. If you want to improve your online presence and get more customers this year, you need to build an outstanding listing, which is what I cover in details in my video, Google My Business Optimization. If you have any questions or comments, as always, don't forget to put them in the description below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, happy marketing.